write about adverse childhood consequences sure. that some kids suffer yep. in growing up, being sworn at, insulted, or humiliated by your parents. Sure. Check. Being pushed, grabbed, or having something thrown at you. Check. Having parents who were separated or divorced. Check. Living with an alcoholic or a drug user. Check. Living with someone who is depressed or attempted suicide. Check. Watching a loved one be physically abused. Check. You're batting a thousand. <laughs> yeah. But Vance escaped what he calls his cultural inheritance, wrote a memoir about it, and landed on the bestseller list. Have you been surprised by how successful it's been? Yes. <laughs> uh, how could I not be? Right? Why do I mean, you I'm, think? Sitting, I'm sitting here talking to Megyn Kelly. <laughs> yes, this is crazy. You know, I want to bring in J.D. Vance. He's a, an author, the author of a book called Hillbilly Elegy, a memoir of a family and a culture in crisis. And you say, this is you begin your book, J.D. You say, I grew up poor in the Rust Belt in an Ohio steel town that has been hemorrhaging jobs and hope for as long as I can remember. I'm sure, that's the way a lot of voters tonight who voted for Donald Trump feel as well. And let me put the question to you that I've asked to others, uh, other, others tonight. What are they looking for from Donald Trump? What do they want tangibly to, to come out of this election? Well, I, I think that tangibly what they want is fundamentally a, ch a change of direction. Now, if you get into specific policies, I think like a lot of voters, they're not voting very much on specific policies as much as they just want to see something different from what they've been offered for the past two or three decades. And then if that doesn't come or if it can't come, well, I definitely think there's going to be a medium or long-term period of reckoning if Donald Trump doesn't deliver on any of the promises. I mean, if the opioid crisis is still there, if the jobs crisis is still there, if everything that's been going in the wrong direction continues to go in the wrong direction, then yeah, people are going to wake up and they're going to be very frustrated. But I do think that folks feel very vindicated right now, right? They, they believed in their man. They felt like the media didn't believe in their man. And right now they're just pretty euphoric. And so the victory could excited. be enough. Yeah. Well, I think it'll be enough for now. Uh, the question is whether it'll be enough two or three years from now. It's about justice for everybody. I mean, and I know, and I know this. I know this election was not about policy details. I realize that. I understand it. Clearly, that's not the case. But when they find out, wait a second. When they find out that Donald Trump's tax plan gives a tax break, a huge tax break to all these elites that Alex was just talking about, what are they going to think? Well, they may not feel very positive about it, but you have to ask, what's the alternative, right? So for a very long time, the elites have been telling them that things are maybe going pretty well. Uh, but if they're not been going well, then what the elites have been saying is, trust us, because if you vote for Trump, then you're going to get a disaster. And they're saying, we've already had the disaster. We've, we've, we've lived it. So why are we going to trust you? It can't be any worse. It's going to get a lot worse. It exactly. can't be any worse. And, then, and, 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 that, and that gets to the point, Koki, everyone has been so wrong about this. All the elites tarnished by all this and, and coming out of this with almost zero credibility on any issue. Well, that's absolutely right. And, uh, and I suspect we'll be feeling it. Uh, and J.D., he did promise something tangible, said he was going to rebuild the country, make, make us have a kind of infrastructure second to none. Yeah, and it reminds me of a debate that a lot of us in the Republican Party had in 2015 about whether the party was ready to move beyond the ideological commitments of Reaganism. That sounded a lot like what Barack Obama promised in 2008, and that was his only policy commitment in his speech. Okay, and Bill Crystal, you were part of the Never Trump movement. As you said, he took on your magazine. He is now our next president of the United States. What's your biggest hope, your biggest fear? And I thought he shouldn't be president. I hope I'm proven wrong. Uh, my hope is that he's a good president, and I very much agree that everyone, Republican and Democrat alike, has to uh, try to help him as president-elect. Uh, you can oppose someone as a candidate and oppose him very strongly. It's a different thing when someone's elected or is the president-elect of the United States. Alex Cus Read J.D. Vance's book if you don't understand what's going on out there. You don't understand what's going on. And let's face it, I don't understand what's going on out there. But there's something about Democrats, they just, they just feel, well, the only way we can win, we have to appeal to those Trump voters or whatever. Right. Well, who we have to appeal to are, there are 8 million Obama voters that voted for Trump. We can win some of those back. Remember, I come from a state where Hillary won, lost by two votes per precinct. That's all she lost by, those 10,000 votes. Right. We can do this. We can get those people back. But it has to be a real concerted effort. Of course, liberals... And Democrats are very used to going, oh, geez, we lost. Oh. Not the other side. Yeah. If he'd won by three million popular votes, believe you me, you and I'd be having a different Jack discussion. That J.D. Vance will win.
the Republican primary. Joining us now is MSNBC's national political correspondent, the great Steve Kornacki. Steve, it is good to see you, my friend. You have big news out of Ohio right now. Those numbers are coming in fast and furious. Yeah, Ali, and there it is. You see the check mark. J.D. Vance, we're declaring, has won the Republican primary. to fa- He will face off against Tim Ryan, the Democrat, in the fall. Big projection. That's right, Dana. We have a major projection right now. CNN is projecting that in Ohio, venture capitalist J.D. Vance will defeat Congressman Tim Ryan and be the next U.S. senator from the state of Ohio. J.D. Vance will be elected the next senator from Ohio. Tim Walls can underscore the fact that two things. This campaign is chameleonic because Tim Walls presents himself as a sort of Midwestern moderate when in reality, he's basically Bernie Sanders Midwest. And two, he presents himself as a hard-charging coach slash military man who is now pretty clearly engaged in a level of stolen valor. And so once again, it's sort of this chameleonic personality that both he and Kamala Harris exhibit. And that's being exposed in real time. So here was Governor Laura Kelly of Kansas suggesting he's just a Midwestern dad, just a Midwestern dad. That is not how Americans are likely to perceive Tim Walz when this is all over. Um, I mean, Tim Walz is the epitome of the Midwestern dad. Uh, you know, you could put him at any state fair on any main street and certainly in any Friday night football game in rural Kansas, and he would fit uh, right in. Sure, sure. He's, he's just a Midwestern dad. That's it. He's just a Midwestern dad who lies about his service for like years and years and years and years. When I coached football, these stands held about 3,000 people. That's a lot. It's also the number of American soldiers who have died fighting in Iraq. Serving right now are kids that I taught, coached, and trained to be soldiers. They deserve a plan for Iraq to govern itself so they can come home. My opponent has the wrong priorities. He actually said he just doesn't get it. Well, I do get it. If you want to change the priorities, you need to change the Congress. I'm Tim Walls, and I approve this message. The 2018 race for Minnesota governor has a new Democratic candidate. Congressman Tim Walls, who has represented southern Minnesota since 2006, announced he is running today. Walls joined St. Paul Mayor Chris Coleman, State Representative Aaron Murphy, and State Auditor Rebecca Otto, who are already running for the Democratic nomination. Mexico. In, in Minnesota, CNN can project that the winner in this governor's race is Tim Walz, defeating Jeff Johnson. And- York. Next, an update for you from the state of Minnesota. Tim Waltz, the incumbent Democrat, projected to win re-election there against Scott Jensen, a physician who made some... Uh, dubious claims about the COVID-19 vaccine. Two Democratic incumbents holding on to the governor's mansion in those two states. As we turn it over to Dana Bash, who has some analysis for us. Dana. Thank you so much for us. This is an evolution, and I know you've been asked about this before, about past comments that you've made about Donald Trump. Uh, You've said, I've never, I'm a never Trump guy, never liked him terrible candidate, idiot if you voted for him, might be America's Hitler, might be a cynical a-hole, cultural heroine, noxious and reprehensible. Senator Vance, in 2016, you called your running mate Donald Trump unfit for the nation's highest office, and you said he could be America's Hitler. I know you've said, you've been asked many times, and you've said you regret those comments and explained you then voted for Donald Trump in 2020. But the Washington Post reported new messages last week in which you also disparaged Trump's economic record while he was president, writing to someone in 2020, quote, Trump thoroughly failed to deliver his economic populism. You're now his running mate, and you've shifted many of your policy stances to align with his. If you become vice president, Why should Americans trust that you will give Donald Trump the advice he needs to hear and not just the advice he wants to hear? You have two minutes. Well, first of all, Margaret, because I've always been open. And sometimes, of course, I've disagreed with the president, but I've also been extremely open about the fact that I was wrong about Donald Trump. I was wrong, first of all, because I believed some of the media stories that turned out to be dishonest fabrications of his record. But most importantly, Donald Trump delivered for the American people rising wages, rising take home pay, an economy that worked for normal Americans, a secure southern border, a lot of things, frankly, that I didn't think he'd be able to deliver on. I've become friends with school shooters. I've seen it. 
don't know, Dougie. I kind of wish I had picked Josh right now. Oh, Josh Shapiro? No, Josh. Cabernet. <laughs> Look, Tim will be fine. It's not like he's gonna say something crazy. I've become friends with school shooters. <laughs> okay, little flub there.